I grew up on both Marvel and DC comic books, various cartoons and TV shows from the 1966 Batman series to 1967 Spider-Man series to 1940s Superman series, which are super old. Nowadays, if I want to read a comic book, I have absolutely no idea where to even begin because there are so many different characters, so many different storylines, so many different multiverses which may or may not be connected and you may or or may not need to you know read through all of them to figure out what's going on which got me thinking what if I had a searchable comic book library which can be searched by character's name and I would get all of the characters that have that name or a similar name and I could click on the character and get all of their comic books and uh, just you know pick and choose which one I want to read the original idea was to make it searchable by both DC and Marvel comic book characters but it looks like DC doesn't have their own uh, public API available for use but Marvel does and it's very good so for this project we are going to use a Marvel's developer account to set up their API so to sum it up I'm going to show you how to set up your Marvel developer account I'm going to show you how to set up your V3 React app I'm going to show you how to set up your API credentials so they don't get pushed to the internet. We're gonna set up all of the UI and all of the functionalities. To start off with setting up your Marvel developer account, you need to go to developer.marvel.com click on get started if you already have an account you're going to be directly sent to the documentation if you don't you will need to set up your account if you already have a marvel account or a disney account or whatever account that's connected to them uh, your email is going to be automatically used to create your account if not you're gonna have to create it manually but it, it's a really short procedure just enter your email here after that enter your first name last name your password and your birthday after that, you're going to be directed to Marvel API Terms of Use, which are pretty long, which uh, and you can read them or not read them. I would bear in mind that uh, you need to uh, you need to click accept terms and conditions above, of course. But if you are planning to create a Marvel app in the future. Uh, and not just keep this as a prototype, you want to go public with it, to publish it, whatever, uh, please read through this. It has some terms and conditions that are, you know, pretty serious in regards to how you are supposed to uh, talk about Marvel, Marvel API, stuff like that. So please read it. If you don't want to read it, just hit accept and that's it. You are going to go to then you're going to be directed to my developer account, which will have your public key and your private key, which are both super important. And we are going to use both of them to generate our API calls. You will have your rate limit here, which is 3000 calls per day, which is uh, not an issue for this project. That's it. That is going to be quite enough to check out the API uh, endpoints. You can go to interactive documentation and down here you are going to see all the public endpoints that are available we are going to use two of them so we're going to use public characters and we are going to use public slash characters slash character ID comics which is just an endpoint to get comics based on a character ID so to start off I opened VS code on one side and I opened the browser on the other side where I've set up my local host so we can easily see what's going on while we update the app and I'm also I've also opened up the getting started with uh, uh, page where you can see how you can install Vit on your uh, on your end. Uh, I'm using Yarn, so I need to enter the command uh, Yarn create Vit or Vite, however you pronounce it, but I believe it's Vit. And if you're using npm, then you need to do npm create Vit uh, latest. Uh, and if you're using if you're using pnpm, then you use pnpm create Vit. Uh, you are going to get a couple of prompts to choose your uh, to, to choose your project name. Project is going to be comic library. Hit enter and you can use your arrow keys to select uh, what uh, what framework framework or what library this project is going to based on. So we are going to select React and then you're going to have an option between TypeScript and JavaScript. For this project, we're going to select JavaScript and that's basically it. And after uh, that is done, you will have to go into the uh, folder that you just created. So a CD comic book library or CD comic 
Dynamics Library. Then you will need to enter the command to install all of the all of the packages. So for me, that is yarn. And after yarn is done installing everything, then we enter yarn dev and uh, localhost is going to start the default app. A few moments later. OK, now we say yarn dev, hit enter and if we refresh we should see the uh, starting vite plus react application which has a counter which we don't need so we are going to immediately go in and clean up stuff so in the source folder you are going to have an assets folder which we don't care about there's going to be app css app jsx from app jsx we are going to delete basically everything and we don't need uh we don't need these for now so we can just delete them and i always like to have uh to have this uh div with a class name of app so we're just going to do that and let's say hello world and there you go we have a hello world we are not going to touch anything in index or main JX, JSX. What we are going to do is we are going to create a couple of new folders. So we are going to add folder images. We are going to add folder components and we are going to add folder styles. We are going to install two libraries. One is for SAS, which you may or may not want to use. If you don't want to use SAS, uh, and in all honesty, you probably don't even really need it here because selectors are really simple, but uh, that's what that's just my preference and I really like SAS. So I am going to use SAS. If you don't want to, you don't need to, but bear in mind your selectors are, are going to need to be a bit different than mine then. And we are going to add uh, an MD5 library, which is used to hash stuff with uh, MD5, which we are going to need to uh, be able to make Marvel API calls, which I'm going to show you later how to do. So uh, you just do yarn add SAS. And after that, we are going to say yarn add MD5 and that's it. So we can close this now. We are also going to add environment file at the root. So it's going to be dot env dot local, which you are going to use to store your API public key and private key. To do this uh, for Vit, it is essential that you prefix your variables in environment folder with Vit underscore. Let's just call this Vit public key which is going to be equal something and the other one is with private key which is going to be equal to something so on your end go back to your developer portal on marvel's website and basically copy paste uh, your keys in here and they also added a couple of images to the images folder one is the paper jpeg which is sort of like that comic book paper texture which we are going to use for a couple of different backgrounds and the spider-man jpeg which is just a spider-man image which we are going to use as a background but feel free to use whatever you want. In the components folder, we are going to create a search.jsx, which is going to be our first component. It is going to be a functional component, and we are just going to say it returns search. On this, uh, at the same time, in the styles, we are going to create search dot scss which is just going to be the way we structure uh, all of our uh, styling for the components we're going to have three different components and three different styles and in here we of course need to import styles search dot scss and that's it we are gonna remove the search and we are gonna make this an empty tag why because we are gonna have a couple of things returning from here for now we are going to have a form which is gonna have a class name of search we are going to have a on submit function which is going to be called handle submit which we are going to implement later i'm going to add it here just for now so const handle submit equals a function and uh, we're just gonna leave it not doing anything and we will so to do let's say to do 
implement later. So we're going to go back to this a bit later. Inside of the form, we are going to have an input, which is going to be self-closing. And it's going to have a placeholder uh, saying enter character name. It is also going to be of type text. And it is going to have an on change event, which is going to call function called handle change which we also don't have right now. So let me just copy paste this here and we are going to say handle change. So we're going to implement this later as well. After that, we're going to have a div, which is going to be our container for buttons. So class name buttons and inside we are going to have two buttons. One button is going to be uh, get character data and its type is going to be submit. So when we click enter, it's supposed to submit the form. And the other button is going to be a reset button, which is also going to be of type reset. It's going to have a class name of reset and it's going to have an on uh, click event, which is going to call handle reset, which we also don't have. So as previously, just copy paste this and we are going to say handle uh, change to change this to handle reset and we are going to implement this later. So uh, I just real realized nothing is being shown here because in the app we need to import search and instead of this saying hello world, we are going to say search. And now when we save, we should have something here. OK, so we have the input, we have get character data and we have reset. So the first thing that we need to implement is basically saving, keeping track of the character name which we are entering here. So in order to do that, we need to import use state, which we are going to use to keep track of it. So use state from react and then we are going to add it to the top here so we're going to say const character name set character name equals use state and we're gonna say it's just an empty string so handle change is basically handle change is the function here, which is being called on input once uh, the value changes. So we can say handle change. We are implementing this right now. So handle change basically gets an event which is being passed uh, automatically to us once the value changes because of an input. And we are going to say basically set character name to whatever value is in the event dot target dot value. So right now, if I'm adding, let's say, Thor, this value is being saved, uh, is being set as a character name. So that's done. Next thing that we want to do is we want to handle what happens when we submit the form. So when we submit the form, either by clicking get character data or uh, hitting enter, the handle submit is going to be called. And in handle submit, we are also going to have an event because that's what happens when you uh, when you submit the form, you get an event and we are going to say event dot prevent default, which basically means we don't want the default behavior. And after that, we are just going to say get character data, which is a function which we also don't have right now. And we are going to make it immediately. Const get character data equals a function. And in this function, we are basically going to call the first Marvel end endpoint for getting the characters based on the character name that we've set during uh, our update of the input text box. We are also going to need two more use states. Well, right now we're going to need one, but let's let's just do all of it at the same time. So for character data, we are going to add character data and set 
character data, uh, which is going to be use state and initial value is going to be null. And later we are going to use comic book data. So comic data set comic data equals use state and we are also going to pass in null. So we are going to use this later. In theory, you can use just one state for this, but I chose to separate them to be so it's more readable and uh, we are handling it a bit differently. So it's basically your preference. If you want, you can join this. So when getting character data, the first thing that we want to do is we want to reset the character data and we want to reset the comic data. Why? Because if for some reason you uh, the API call doesn't get through, we don't want to get stuck with the old data. We want to show that basically we started you know, doing something, the data was removed and we tried to get new data, but we didn't get it. It shows that we tried. Next thing that we need to do is specific to Marvel's API calls where we need to pass in the timestamp for each uh, for each API call. We need to pass in the timestamp, which is basically current time of day. And we need to create a hash based on the timestamp, the public key and the private key. So let's see how we can do that. So we're going to say const time stamp equals new date dot get time oops sorry not get time zone but get time and for marvel's api use case this is going to be enough we need to get the hash and we're going to say const hash equals and we're going to call a new function that we still don't have which is just be which is just going to be called get hash or sorry not get hash but generate hash and we are gonna pass in timestamp into generate hash why are we using generate hash as a separate function just so we can make things more readable so we're gonna make generate hash function which is basically going to return md5 and like we said we are getting timestamp here and into md5 we need to pass in timestamp plus your public key oops sorry public key plus your private key now we don't have these yet so we're gonna set them up right now so basically we can set them below the use state and we can say const public key equals and this is vit specific to get the stuff from your uh, vit environment file you need to enter import dot meta dot env dot and then your variable name from there so for me that is vit underscore public underscore key and we're gonna do the same thing for the private key so private key equals import dot meta dot env dot vit private underscore Key. So now in MD5, we are combining timestamp with public key and with private key. And we, of course, need to import MD5 in order to use it. We can just say import MD5 from MD5. So now we have the generate hash function, which we are using here to get the hash. Now we need to set up the URL. I'm just going to copy paste mine here and we are going to go through it. So we are setting up the const URL with string with back ticks because we are going to use a couple of uh, a couple of variables inside of the string. But basically the URL is https colon double slash gateway dot marvel dot com colon four four three slash v1 slash public slash characters then we have a question mark which means we are starting to pass in our parameters so the first parameter is the api key which is basically our public key so you the way you enter the parameters into the url is basically the parameter name equals dollar sign curly braces and inside of curly braces you enter your public key because it's a javascript variable which we are entering into a string you are connecting your 
your parameters with the end symbol, however you call it. And our next parameter is hash, which is equal to our hash. And after that, we are passing in the third parameter, which is timestamp. So you just say TS equals timestamp. Fourth parameter is name starts with. So this is specific to the endpoint that we are using to get the character. Basically, if you do not enter name starts with, you need to search for full character name, which I didn't want to do. I wanted to be able to sort of explore different characters that have similar names. So I use name starts with. But bear in mind that this search is just the, the front part of the name. So if, for example, if you enter strange, you are not going to get Dr. Strange because his name starts with DR doctor. Uh, you pass in character name inside of the name starts with and character name is our property which we are keeping in state by changing the value in the input text box here and the final parameter which is optional is limit which I am passing in as 100 because that's the maximum upper limit for the number of characters that you can get if you don't pass in any limit you are going to get 20 at most if there are that many characters but I wanted to get as many as I can so I added limit equals to 100 and that's basically the whole URL now we need to fetch this so we are gonna say fetch URL and after that we're gonna say then we are gonna get some response and we are gonna return that response dot JSON so we can get the JSON object after that we are gonna add another then we are going to say result because we are getting some sort of result now. And we what we are going to do is basically we are going to set the character data to the result data. Sorry, result without the S data. So if you want to see how this actually works and why I said the result dot data, we can just console log the result and see what we're getting. So I'm going to maximize this refresh and I'm going to open console and let's say Thor and click get character data and we get an error saying that hash timestamp and key combination is invalid. Let me just check that real quick. So in the MD5, we actually need to switch places here. So first we do timestamp, then we do private key and then we do public key. And I believe this should work now. So let's refresh again. Let's say Thor and let's say get character data. And you can see we get a big object here and all of our actual data is inside the data here. So that's why I'm using results.data and in the data we actually have results. OK, so this part of the app works. We can enter a character name and we basically get some data for that character. We can remove this console log here and as a precaution after then we can say catch and we can say error console log there was an error and we can pass in the error message and we are going to actually wrap this up in curly braces because we are not actually returning an error we are just doing a console log so now we have the character data which we are getting from here and we can use that character data to generate character cards below our form we are going to going to say if there is no comic data, because the idea is if there is comic data, we want to display comic data. If there is no comic data, but we do have character data, we want to display characters. So we say if there is no comic data and there is character data and character data has results which has at least one one item in the array then we are going to say and and we are going to display our characters component which we don't have right now we are going to build it so next but we're also going to have a couple of props that we are passing into the characters there is the data which equals 
character data dot results and we also are going to have an on click event which is going to pass on to all of the character cards which is going to be get comic data which is a function which we don't have right now and we are going to add a placeholder for it so this is uh, in general this is going to be very similar to get character data so we are just going to place it here and i'm going to say just copy paste this uh oops sorry just copy paste this here okay so we are going to create a new file in the components called characters dot jsx and this is going to be a functional component that just returns characters for now likewise in styles we are going to say characters dot scss which we are going to fill in later and for characters we are going to import styles characters scss as we saw earlier, we are going to get two parameters here, which are going to be data and on click. And we are going to return a div with a class name of characters. And let's see just characters. Just to see that this is working, we are going to go back to search and import characters. Okay, so we are getting the characters here. If we refresh, we don't get anything. So that's working properly. So going back into characters, we are getting some data here, which we are going to map through basically. So data dot map character, and we are going to return a div here. And inside of a div, we are going to have two different things. We are going to have a div with a class name of caption. And inside we are going to say we are going to say character dot name. So that is going to be our caption. He is going to be character dot ID because all characters have IDs on them. And while we are here, let's add other things as well so class name is going to be character card and we are going to add a couple of styles here in line because we want to change the background of the object uh, dynamically so the style is going to be background we are going to add backticks url open brackets and inside we're going to say dollar sign curly braces character dot thumbnail dot at and after that so outside of the curly braces we're gonna add dot then another dollar sign another curly braces set of curly braces and inside character dot thumbnail dot extension and outside of that outside of that completely we're going to say no repeat and center after that we're gonna add comma and we're gonna say we're gonna say background size and that is going to be set to cover so basically what this does is for the background of every card we are going into that character's data and inside of there there's the object called thumbnail which has two properties one is the path to an image which is a url string and also there is an extension which is also a string that is basically just dot jpeg or dot png not even dot it's just jpeg or or png and that's why we're adding a dot here so when we glue it on top of each other we should get in theory we should get a full thumbnail url which we are going to set to center and to cover and to not repeat itself and after this there is an on click event which we are going to set up as function that is just calling on click with character dot id 
So this is basically, if you remember, or you don't even have to remember. So in search in characters, we are passing in get comic data as on click. Get comic data is essentially behaving very similar to get characters, where we take the character ID instead of the name this time, and we get all of the comic books. So that's why we are passing in characters ID here on click, but we are going to implement that API call a bit later. I forgot to add another div here. So this is going to be a div which is going to say view comics. It is going to have a class name of caption and bottom. So this is basically going to be another caption that we are going to use. If you remember when I when I showed you how the what the app looks like. So the character name is going to be visible at the top from the start. And when we hover over it with our mouse, the character name is going to get hidden and view comics is going to pop into view. So it's sort of obvious that you are supposed to click on it. And we're going to do a similar thing with comic books where the comic book title is going to be on top instead of the character name and view comics is going to be shown uh, on hover. So now if we enter a character name here, let's say Thor and hit get character data, we do get stuff here. No CSS is set up, so it looks all uh, weird, but we're going to handle that later. So that's basically it for the characters. Now we are going to create a new component for comic data. So we're just going to say new file comics.jsx and in styles, we are also going to say comics.scss and in the comics, we're going to say this is a functional component and we are going to import from the styles and we're going to add styles later. Going back to search, we now need to implement get comic data over here. Get comic data is very similar to get character data, but instead we are getting character ID here. And we are also adding a small line of code here, which basically says window crawl two, and we're going to say top zero left zero. So what this basically does, it just scrolls all the way to the top because when we get a when we enter a character name, which as a result uh, gives us a lot of characters and we scroll down and let's say we click one of the bottom characters, the page is going to stay scroll down instead of, you know, seeing all of the results from the top. So to uh, to basically stop that, we are going to scroll to the top and then continue with uh, everything that we want to do. Similarly, to get character data, we are going to get the timestamp and the hash in the same way as we did there. So for timestamp, we're getting the time and for the hash, we are generating the hash from the timestamp and from the, the private key and public key. And after that, we are going to get the URL and it's similarly to the similarly to the get character data in comic data so we have the same start so https gateway.marvel.com 443v1 public characters and then instead of just entering parameters after characters we have another slash we are passing in character id which we got from here. After that, we have slash comics and then a question mark. And then we are adding all of the parameters similarly to how we did for the comics, where we say API key equals public key, hash equals hash, TS equals timestamp. Now we have our URL and now we are basically going to do the same thing that we did for fetching the characters. So we're going to say fetch URL, then response return response.json then results we are going to say set comic data with results.data and to see that this works we can do console log results and in the end we can also add catch and say error and we're going to say console log error while fetching comics comic data and we're going to pass in the Error. And that's basically it for the get comic data. To reiterate, what happens is I refresh here. I'm going to add 
Thor here, get character data. And now when I click on Thor, so the comic books get removed because as you remember, we are saying if there's no comic data, then we're displaying characters. So when I go to console, we should have comic book data here. So in the results, there is a bunch of Thor comic books. Now we can start with implementing the comic books and similarly to characters, we are going to say if there is comic data and if there is comic data dot results and there is at least one element here and then we are going to show comics which we need to import here. So import comics from comics. Now inside of the comics component, we are also passing in data, which is comic data dot re results and uh, yeah that's it for the the comics we are not passing in an on click event because from the comic itself from the comic data it, we are going to get the url for the marvel page for that comic which we are going to use to wrap the card inside of a url tag going inside of comics so we are getting data here as well and we are returning div here with class name equal to comics and inside we are going to say data map comic and inside we need to extract the details page url first so we're going to say const details url equals to comic dot urls and inside of the urls there can be multiple different objects uh, with different uh, types i believe right now the first one is the url but uh, later down the line that may change or for some other call that may change to prevent that we are going to search for the type so we're going to say comic dot urls dot find and inside we're going to say element and we are going to return the element which has the type equal to detail and that object is going to have a property called url and that's what we're looking for and after that we are going to say return and we are actually going to return a link which has a key of comic.id and it has a class name of comic Card, and we are going to set up a similar styling that we did for the that we did for the characters. So we're going to say background equals to backticks URL, and in brackets we say dollar sign curly braces comic dot thumbnail dot path. We add a dot, another dollar sign curly braces comic dot thumbnail dot extension after that we add no repeat center and background size is going to be equal to cover href is going to be our details url and we are going to say target equals underscore blank and rel is going to be equal to no refer, no refer. Okay, so this is basically so we can open the, the URL in a new tab one, once we click on it. And inside of the URL tag, we are going to have two divs, which are going to be captions. So class name equals caption. And this here is going to be comic.title and the other one is going to be div with a class name of caption and separately bottom and this here is going to be view comic details and that's basically it for the comics we can refresh the page and test everything so thor get character data we click on it and 
uh, this does work, but the images aren't showing because we need to set them up properly through CSS. And there is still another function here called handle reset, which is the reset button, which we need to implement. And it's basically just setting all of our use states to default values. So we are setting character data to null. We are setting comic data to null and we are setting character name to an empty string and this is basically the the full functionality right now this is doing everything that we wanted it to do from the start now the only other thing left is to set up all of the css we are going to start with index css where we have a bunch of things here which we do not want so we can delete everything so once we've deleted everything everything is gone and i'm just gonna paste what i have on my end and you can just copy it so we are importing a url which is actually font from uh, google fonts and it's for the font called bangers which is sort of looking like a comic book font and to the body we are setting margin of zero and for the background we are setting a linear gradient with 45 degrees and it's going from a bluish color to a slightly different uh, bluish uh, color which is is super transparent so this is uh, 0.3 and this is 0.1 just so we can give it a little bit of color we are setting it to no repeat fixed center and we below that we are setting an image which is one of the images that we added here so the spider-man jpeg and we are setting that to no repeat fixed center and we are setting the background size to cover but like i said if you want to change the background you can use whatever image you want for search i'm just gonna copy paste everything that i have and we're gonna quickly go through it so for the search we are setting the display to flex and the direction to column so we have two basically two top level elements here which is one the input and the other is the button container so they are being sorted in a column they are being aligned to center and and the max width is being set to 500 pixels so it doesn't go too wide and we are giving it a little bit of margin on top and uh, we are setting auto on the left and right so we can uh, center it for the input itself we are setting it width to 300 pixels and we are setting the font size to 1.4 em we are aligning text to center which basically makes the placeholder and the text that we are typing in be centered uh, we are adding slight margins so we can push the buttons. We are setting the font family to bangers and we are adding it a little bit of padding. So there's some room for the for the text. For the buttons, we are setting their own font size to 1.2M. We are adding a little bit of padding. So we have a little bit of space there. We are adding a margin bottom, which is basically going to push the character data and the comic data a bit. We are setting the cursor to pointer. So it's obvious that uh, stuff can be clicked. Font family, bangers again. Background for the, the regular button, we are setting it to a shade of yellow, which which is basically almost like a pure yellow. We are adding the transition because of the shadows. So we do have a box shadow, uh, which is uh, moved two pixels to bottom and two pixels to right, and it's pure black. And we also have a one pixel solid black border here. And we are using linear transition of uh, 0.2 seconds because on hover, we are doing a transform. We are translating the button we're moving it basically two pixels left and two pixels to the top and for the box shadow we are actually making it bigger so it actually looks like the the button is going up and the shadow is going in, in, in the opposite direction. So the, the shadow is being made bigger. So that's for the both buttons. And for the reset, we are just adding a slight margin. So there's some spacing there and we are setting the background color to white. So it stands out a bit more. Now for characters, for characters, I'm also gonna copy paste everything that I have. And I'm just going to enter 
a character name here and we can see what that looks like. It's set to have max width of 80 view width uh, with some margins. We are using a display grid to basically make it have three items per row, which we are doing here. So we are doing a display grid and then we're saying grid template columns, which repeat three times and for the grid gap we're setting 10 pixels so there's some spacing we are adding a padding of 1m so there's a bit of space for the for the captions and background color is white by default uh, in case the image doesn't load and the background image is actually the paper jpeg that we added here the idea was to basically make this look like a comic book page and these like uh, panels from a comic book for the character card for some reason, we uh, have border and background here, which we don't actually need because uh, the background is being set through JavaScript and we have border here as well. So we are adding a bit of a padding. So there's room for the for the captions here. We are setting the display to flex and flex direction to column. Height is being set to 300 pixels. Border is being set to two pixels solid black to give it that uh, comic book style outline. And there is additional box shadow similar to buttons here we have a little bit of a bigger box shadow because the cards are bigger so there's four pixels to the right four pixels to the bottom and it's uh, black we are adding a filter to make it grayscale to make it pop a little bit more on hover uh, and we're adding transition transition specifically for those effects here for the caption we are setting the font family to bangers font size to 1.6 m text is being aligned to center we are setting a little bit of margin and we are adding a bit of a padding so there's room for the text background color is being set to default uh, by default white and for the background image, we are once again setting the paper JPEG. There's also, caption also has a border of, of one pixel, uh, which is solid black. And there is also a small box shadow of two pixels. The other uh, view comic caption that, that's being shown on hover uh, is, uh, it has a position of absolute. We don't actually need to do absolute here. I just found it easier to set this up that way. I just want to have two captions and they just need to you know sort of switch so i handled it with position absolute and setting the the bottom to uh, one ram and moving it left uh, 50 percent and translating x by 50 percent and setting its opacity to zero this can be handled multiple ways it's basically your preference so after that we have the hover for the character card. So when we hover over the character card, the cursor changes to pointer. Filter, uh, grayscale filter gets set to zero. So we get the original color. Box shadows get a bit larger. They go to six pixels and uh, the transform and translate happens. So the, the card basically goes a bit to the top and a bit to the left and the box shadow grows a bit bigger. The original caption gets its opacity set to zero. So Thor, uh, Thor cap gets set to zero and the bottom caption which is view comics its opacity gets set to one so that's how that was handled and we have a small media query here uh, which says media only screen and the max width equals 800 pixels we are basically setting characters grid to be one character per row which you can see over here and for the comics once again i'm going to copy paste everything hit save and I'm going to open Thor to show you what it looks like. So it's very similar to uh, characters. The comics panel is also 80 view width. Uh, margins are set to zero and auto to make it centered. Display is set to grid, but uh, the grid template is set to repeat five times. So we have in original view, we have five comic books, which I found to be optimal, at least for me while working, because the images are quite quite wide and quite tall uh, and they wanted to sort of try and keep that original you know comic book uh, proportions the grid gap is set to 10 pixels as well uh, we have a padding on, of 1m and for the background color once again we are using paper jpeg for the comic card we have a two pixel border which is actually not needed same as the same as the character card so we actually have a padding of 1m display flex and flex direction 
animation column height is set to 400 pixels so a bit higher than the characters we have a 2 pixel solid black border and 4 pixel box shadow similar to characters and there's a transition of 0.2 seconds which is linear and text decoration color is set to black because these are URLs and URLs are by default blue for the caption we are setting the font family to bangers similar to characters font size is 1.6m text aligned to center margins set to auto and uh, the one is set to zero so it's uh, centered background color is by default set to white and once again background image is set to paper jpeg color of the text is set to black for the border we are adding once again one pixel solid black and for the box shadow two pixels uh, black box shadow and for the bottom which is the view comic details it's basically the same setup except we have its width set to 60 here and the reason is that titles are pretty long so I, I wanted to it to be less you know less jarring when you when you hover over it for the hover so this is the hover for the comic card we have a cursor being set to pointer filter grayscale is being set to zero so we get the original color box shadows once again are being made larger and the the card is being moved to top and to the left and for the captions we are having their opacity set the original one is set to zero and the view comic details bottom caption is set to one and we have some additional media queries which say media only screen and the max width equals 1200 pixels where we have the comics grid being set to three items and if max width is up to 800 pixels we are setting grid to one and that's basically it that's the that's the whole app here there's a whole bunch of things that you can add here because like i said the api is very interesting there's all sorts of data you have data for different uh, events uh, for different stories you can also make an additional interface which is highlighting the characters that you want to read more about and saving them to a local storage or to an online database if you want to go that far you could basically make your own database of characters that you want to read more comics about or you can save the comic book data or bookmark sort of bookmark the comics that you want to read about group them up stuff like that you can make all sorts of interesting things with this if you want to check out my other videos i can suggest a pixel app video that i did a while ago this is my first video after two years or so of being away from uh, from youtube as always all of the code for the project is going to be posted on github there's also going to be a blog post on my website for the text version if you are more of a text person if you like what you saw and what we did here uh, please make sure to leave a like subscribe please also post a comment if you have any additional questions or suggestions for future projects my name is Alex thank you for joining me in today's tutorial and I will see you in the next one